Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today we're going to be talking about DLL side loading. So some of you might not have heard of this before. Um, it's something that I don't think I've actually ever talked about in my channel. But since I've looked at malware and reversed more, um, this has become more and more relevant than maybe before when I was looking at crime. Uh, so this is often used in APT work and stuff like that. So it's really interesting to look at. Um, similar to hijacking but a little bit broader, this is the definition of DLL sideloading. I absolutely didn't get this from the meter attack framework. Um, DLL sideloading can be from improperly or vaguely specified a required DLL. A bit weird sentence there, maybe I didn't properly look at that. But essentially um, it comes down to usually old binaries that aren't correctly configured with how they load their DLLs. Um, so it's always really interesting to look at, at what a threat actor is looking at and what they're trying to target, especially the, it's interesting to see the reuse of signed binaries that they often come across. Um, so yeah, it's interesting that this is a thing, side learning, but really who does use this? So in my own experience, I have seen quite a lot of binaries through old antivirus binaries, um, and this is usually to stop analysts trying to find it. So they usually use signed binaries which they can then um, use a DLL that's been loaded by this uh, binary, this uh, vulnerable binary, to look as if, as if it was um, actual good behavior. So what's really the big deal? I've already sort of touched upon this. It's actually a lot of people when they see a signed binary they immediately trust it. It's the same with TLS certificates. The idea that it's been ver verified um, means it must be safer. But the idea of it being verified is simply for its um, authenticity. And when it comes down to binaries, un unfortunately, it does lack a little bit because quite a lot of companies that dish out these digital certificates for digital code signing often aren't very good at understanding what the actual binary they're signing for. So there has been multiple cases of ransomware or malware in most, well, broader sense um, that has been signed by some form of certificate authority to allow it to be seen as di digitally signed. So one of the things I find most interesting is um, the way people perceive signed binaries and how really they are essentially the same as unsigned. The only real use for a signed binary is to attempt to understand who is the author of this. And even with that, you can have impersonations and you can have people who steal these certificates. So even in that case, you cannot fully trust the signed binary at all at this point. So I talk a lot about binaries and malware in my videos but I don't actually often go in deep dive and actually look at an example and so in this case I am looking at an old plug X sample which has DLL side loading available or it does do DLL side loading and I've given the SHA-256 I will be putting that in the video description as well don't you worry about that this is available on hybrid analysis so the main thing with that is that you're able to see the dynamic behavior maybe you can't get it working in your sandbox or whatever environment you've got so it's really interesting to actually see it on hybrid analysis it's also an app dot anyone or app any I can't remember what they're called uh, but they also have it in their sandboxed environment successfully executed so it just helps you a little bit to understand it um, and there's a few ways that we identify it as plug X some really general but the main thing the main technique and the main basis of this video is talking about the side loading capability and a little bit of analysis. So before we start with analysis in the VM, the major thing for me is looking at the actual process execution. We could probably get this from a proc monologue, but as we have sandboxes already that have submitted it, it's much easier to do this. We can see that MVSmart has been seen before, a little bit of a signifier that it might necessarily not be the threat actors. Um, and it's being loaded initially and then it drops as well and being executed. So there's multiple. Um, so there's that app. Anyone actually has a better look at it. You can see it here. We've got the start. It drops and then starts MV Smart. And then what's indicative of PlugX is that MSI exec.exe has been um, launched as well, which is really important because in some PlugXs that is um, executed and then a 
um, it's, it's being injected. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go into a very old, very old um, analysis environment. So one thing about me is that I love Windows XP. Uh, it's very clear by the I'm keeping um, the analysis VM at, at XP. I mean, I do have Windows 10 and all of that, but um, on my personal computer, I unfortunately at the moment have only created an analysis VM that's in Windows XP still. I apologize in literally every video, but it's just... It's what it is. This is what it is. Um, so one of the first few things that people do is use static analysis tools. Um, now I know from Sandbox that this is uh, a self-extracting archive. There's another indicator here. I've got WinRAR automatically installed on here. And I can see open with WinRAR. That's a big indicator. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this up in WinRAR to show you. So uh, these are probably characters that aren't in the English code probably Chinese or probably Asian in some form. Um, then we've got setup NVSmart. I don't think I need to go into this too much, but the interesting part is here is the binaries. So we can see exe, dll, and we can see dll.xml. Now that one's a, bit, a little bit of an interesting one. So what I've done is I've already extracted them out. If I right click this and go on properties, we can see that it's, di it's digitally signed. So we can see it was set in 2011. Um, and it's from the NVIDIA Corporation. So you'd automatically say that when you see processes launched like this, you'd be like, mm, maybe that actually is legitimate. But when you investigate a little bit further into this, um, you find that actually it's not, it's not the right thing for this. So usually um, with PlugX executions, um, you have the legitimate binary, you have a, a DLL loader with some shellcode, which is the third component. So my assumption here is that this XML is the third component. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this into a hex editor and it probably won't make much sense. I've already got it there. So um, if we just scroll down we can see just it looks possibly like it could be shellcode. So without too much reasoning this is randomized data. Maybe it's compressed, maybe it's not, I don't know. I've got not too much to say for it. I could put entropy in it but I, I'll be honest I'm very straightforward. I'm not methodical. I want to be as quick as I can with some of the malware that I have to look at because it's sometimes time sensitive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume, put some theory out there first of all, look at the binaries. I can see that's digitally signed. This gets run. These all get dropped out into a folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the DLL is the first one that I should look at. If I put this into CFF Explorer, fantastic static analysis tool, look at the export directory. We got some interesting exports. I don't know too much about this. I do know that PlugX uses nvsmart.exe quite a lot, but I do know that I, I don't know enough to say is this from the threat actor, is this from um, the actual binary. Most times they align the exports from what is imported from the binary. Not always the case. Sometimes it can get a little bit exotic, but in most cases. So in, in IDA, um, we're going to look at the different exports. There was the interesting thing when I first looked at this is looking at the addresses. All of these are the same. So when it comes across that, it can mean that they're all attempting the same malicious behavior and whatever's being called as an export, it leads to malicious behavior or vice versa. It can be that only entry point is malicious. In this case, when we look at this, it's that this isn't malicious or this is not going to help us identify the malicious behavior. Um, the reason why I'm so fixated on the exports is this. From previous experience with PlugX, we can see um, that this will always be the loading DLL. They'll, they'll always have shell code, which leads to something else, but this will always be a loading DLL. So looking at the strings and looking at imports usually doesn't help. Sometimes the imports with virtual alloc and actually memory allocation and memory um, modification APIs works. But what I usually go for is the exports and work from there. So from there, um, we by default go to the entry point in IDA but I looked at the others beforehand so pretty simple there's only one call to a subroutine we go there instantly my main thing is virtual protect when I see a virtual protect that sort of brings up the interest here we had similar code from what we had in the other exports which is get system time and then exit process so there's a condition there for us to um, be judged on um, get module handle a can help us understanding our location which is also something that pricks up my interest this long old um f not a function but a uh, lead to execution of this code here 
really perks up my interest as well what it's trying to do and finally this offset location right here this is also interesting because we lead straight to it we see this offset of XML if we go back to the extracted um, DLLs even if we're not good at reverse engineering we can bring up some theories here that maybe this DLL is thinking of talking about this because these are both if you do get module handle A you'll get the location of where you are so this will be MV smart or should be MV smart max DLL um, and then what I'm assuming is that it appends or concatenates as we see here the next API um, XML so there's kind of an intelligent move they don't want to be bringing the complete file name because that might prick up some um, antivirus name or antivirus detections but simply append onto it um, some virtual memory allocation which is interesting create file read file this is where it gets interesting because when you've got this combination of virtual alloc create file read file close handle then immediately after that close handle you should look for something like this so seeing that this is being pushed here this this buffer which will be then called for execution instantly means that there's no um, subroutine that's going to deobfuscate that's not a compressed um, shellcode it's raw shellcodes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the shellcode to see if what we can what we can see from it at first you may at first you may think this is uh, too random this isn't shellcode but actually because we've got these uh, values that are set consistently to the right here and being manipulated in certain ways for a large amount of time and then there's this jump that we can't get from either all of a sudden what this tells me is this is decompressing or deobfuscating um, or whatever's happening here um, part of the shellcode and so live analysis should be done through the debugger to have a little look or we could do it manually it would maybe take a little bit longer than anticipated so we could do some analysis on understanding and trying to deconstruct this um, and we certainly can um, maybe in the next video but really I want to just move on to it because the highlight really here is side loading but I wanted to talk about the the chain of events that usually happens with plug X so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to execute this and hopefully it works if it doesn't then I'll just cry a little bit I don't know um, I've not actually executed it on this system so this could burn and fail but needs must when it comes down to demos let's give it a double click see what happens hopefully we get an execution as MV smart MV smart will probably execute MSIX we've got MV smart so we've got SVC host now that is interesting um, there we go SVC host to MSI exec so sometimes it stays to SVC host um, but sometimes it can um, yeah there's different ways of doing it cool um, I'll, I'll, well, I already stepped in cool um, plug X sample impersonates NVIDIA uh, in the way that I'm saying impersonates is utilizes that vulnerable executable to be able to load its DLL then finally eventually load its shellcode from within another file the XML file uh, this is a common binary the nvsmart.exe and is a indicator you would call it an indicator of malicious activity um, especially as that is quite an old sign now I don't, I'm pretty sure that won't be valid so um, nvsmart DLL is the threat actors DLL that is malicious how do we stop this? We must know our environment. So a lot of people will be like, well, you know, at what point you've got to, you know, accept signed binaries. There's always a trade-off, of course. Um, not over-trusting signed binaries is my main message. Malware operators used certificates to sign this. As I've linked a recent story on Locker Goga, which um, had a signed ransomware, which bypassed obviously some defenses and some people's analysis so um, yeah that's the main main point that I wanted to make in this video hopefully it's been interesting in some way um, and it's been good uh, I'm hopefully producing more videos than I normally would have um, this past year in 2018 um, so yeah see you around guys